this is from MSNBC. So we went from CNN, right? We're going to go to MSNBC, and then we're going to go to Fox News, Breitbart, the Daily Wire, and then we're going to finish off with the AP, right? So Trump's response to the FBI search is definitely paying off for the DOJ. This is the news story right here. Now, let that sink in. Let that sink in for a little bit. Trump's response to the FBI search is definitely paying off for the DOJ. So, let me get this straight. The DOJ just put out a statement saying that a lot of officials are getting death threats. A lot of officials from the National Archives is getting death threats. But we're going to sit here and blatantly lie and say that it's paying off for the DOJ? It doesn't make any sense at all. It does not make any sense. Former President Donald Trump's response to the FBI search and Mar-a-Lago is paying off for the Justice Department, not for him. Trump was quick to point out the historic nature of the, the search within his words, un-American, unwarranted, and unnecessary. But far from helping his case, statements like this merely show the Justice Department viewed Trump's apparent mishandling of government documents as an unpredicted threat. Unperceived, unperceived threat. Unprecedented. Um, so far, the only thing constant about Trump's defense strategy is that it is nearly, it is largely incoherent and largely, largely irrelevant. Trump intimidated the that. Trump intimated that the FBI plated documents on Addis his state in Palm Beach, Florida. The problem with that, in addiction, in addition to the fact that there are no basis for this claim, is that Trump has also argued that there is no problem with his, with his having said documents, not only because they are privileged, but also because they are because he declassified them. The, Ar the National Archives Administration rejected Trump's previous privilege arguments, which were likely less more than an attempt to stonewall the investigation. Now, here's the thing. We need to change this thing. We need to change the, f the way that presidents declassify information because we keep having stuff like this. We keep having issues that come up that we are confused about, right? We are confused about the situation with presidents declassifying information. If we do not know how the president actually declassifies information, how are we supposed to know if a president actually declassified the information or not? We actually don't know if the president declassified the information or not, and that's not a good thing. If we don't know if the president actually declassified a piece of document, and then took it, taken it to its home, to his home. Then how are we supposed to know if that's against the law or not? We need to have a clear cut case on, on the president on how presidents declassify information because presidents have the ability to declassify any information that they want. Now, if they go and tweet out something about a document that they just read, it automatically becomes declassified. We need to have it actually go through the the. The court system because that would make it clear cut on this day you went to the the court system and you said i want to declassify this and we accepted it boom instead the way that presidents declassify information is to frame them in a bad light if they want to but obama took lots of uh, lots of classified documents and said that there he was going to release it publicly and he still didn't so it's okay for obama to take declassified information to his dc mansion but it's not okay for for Trump to take to take um what's it called classified documents to his Mar-a-Lago vacation home in Florida. Hmm. Hmm. Something seems fishy. Next, Lindsey Graham's warning of riots are a threat. Now this was trending on Twitter, right? For no reason at all. This was trending on Twitter. Lindsey Graham's warnings of riots are a threat. Hmm. <laughs> so, Republican Lindsey Graham 
of South Carolina is warning everyone that if Donald Trump ends up being charged for his Mar-a-Lago cache of classified documents, there they will be mayhem in America. If they try to prosecute President Trump for mishandling classified information after Hillary Clinton set up a server in her basement, they are, they are literally going to be riots on the street. Now, I would have framed this differently, especially because they're investigating a lot of people for inciting violence on January 6th. So even if you said that we should fight for our right, they're taking that and saying that you wanted to single-handedly take over the United States government. How dare you? That's what they're saying. Now, knowing this, what they're doing for January 6th people and everybody involved with January 6th, I personally would not make this claim. But also at the same exact time, I'm not the one making a threat. Lindsey Graham is not the one making a threat. He's saying that it will happen, but he's not saying that he's the one that's going to be doing it. See what I'm saying here? Other people are the ones going to be doing it. So, um, he said this in a Fox News interview. I worry about our country. Graham, in effect, made the point about riots twice. It's an extra per pernarious turn of a of phrase, but a talking point. That talking point was more than just a prediction. It was also with the rat. Oh my God. See, they're trying to frame this in such a way that anybody could be blamed for anybody, anything, right? Graham is in a disinterested social scientist forecasting the future of the Trump movement. He's a powerful conservative politician, one of the most influential Trump Sio Pantics on Capitol Hill, and he was talking about the most influential conservative media outlet in the country. Fox News is not conservative. I'm sorry. Fox News is not conservative. They lost my, my, my trust, Fox News, when they ran the transgender story. They're not conservative. They're Republican. I'm sorry. Um, so... As he expected a general worry about the nation, he didn't condemn the idea of riots that he said would follow a Trump indictment. And his comments about the incitement of riots can't blame on the Justice Department, cast blame on the Justice Department instead of the man with a history of gruesome... Okay, so you're just stupid, MSNBC. I don't know what I expected from an MSNBC article, but this sums up the whole entire thing. Instead of the man with a history of grotesque abuse of power who abstended a Mar-a-Lago with sensitive documents. But when Bill Clinton left the White House, he took half of the White House with him in documents, in classified documents. When Obama left the White House, he took the, a lot of documents with him to his, to his D.C. mansion. But are we going to talk about that? No. Because you're friends with the guy. You're friends with the guy. That's why you're not going to talk about it. MSNBC, don't lie to yourself. Next. Why quiet quitting is a dead end. Hmm, wait a second. Finally, we're admitting the, the very, very stupidity of quiet quitting. Now, let me explain what quiet quitting is. And this is the article, by the way. Forgot to show it, right? This is what quiet quitting is. Quiet quitting is when you don't want to quit your job. Instead of quitting, you're just going to do less work. You're going to do less work and end up getting ultimately fired because you don't like your job. So why is it a dead end? MSNBC explains in such a way. Have you ever heard the news? Quiet quitting is all the rage among young Americans who are um, bored out of... Oh, okay. Okay, so never mind. Let me restart this, okay? Okay. Have you ever, have you heard the news? Quiet quitting is all the rage among young Americans who are burned out and fed up with being overworked. Quiet quitting is under, underlying am, am, ambition to draw clearer boundaries between work, life, work and life. It's a healthy one in a society that fetishes endless hustle. Wow. Look at us. We're on the wrong source. Okay. Um, I was just reading this one right here. Okay, so it's a self-undermining concept, and it's actively vulnerable to being co-opted, co-opted, co-opted by managers. And unless it's 
coupled with a broader under broader understanding of why many people feel a compulsion to martyr themselves to the workplace and how unions are a worker's best bet for a designated working environment it's a dead end wow would have thought so you putting in less effort is a dead end to your job because yes it's going to get you ultimately fired okay because you're putting less work in but if you don't like the job that you are why don't you just find another job hmm why quiet quit you're putting in less work which is going to get you recognized and then probably written up because you're not putting in the same amount of work as what you did before but whatever so um there isn't a consensus consensus on the premise meaning of quiet quitting that's what it was but whatever a buzzword that took off on tiktok this summer and a viral video in july with more than 40,000 shares describes it like you're not out white outright quitting your job be quitting the idea of going above and beyond so you're lazy you give up on your dream on your um job because you don't want to quit I'm not going to read the rest of it because it's just stupid. Hey, hey, before you go, don't forget to check out all my other content that I don't only have on this channel, but all of my other channels that I have. I do have a cooking channel where I make weekly videos that I make pancakes and cupcakes and all different things like that. I also have a podcast channel where it is not political at all, and I just talk about my daily life. That's available on all the popular streaming platforms and finally we have this show and we have a new show coming soon which i will be announcing in the next couple weeks if you did like this video please subscribe down below for weekly content and like this video so i know that you like videos like this thank you all and have a great one bye